Hey guys, Mr. Backberg here. This is part two of lesson 2.6. Two objectives in this video. We are going to analyze and sketch graphs of rational functions, and then we're going to find zeros of rational functions. In front of you right now is a big long list of things that we're going to do. And all of these steps are going to build us towards graphing out a rational function. Step number one says we're going to simplify our function down as much as we can at the very beginning. Step number two, we are going to plug in zero for our x value in order to help us find our y intercepts. Step number three, we are going to take the numerator of our rational function, so the top of the rational function, set that thing equal to zero in order to find some x intercepts. Step number four, if we set the denominator equal to zero, that's going to help us find our vertical asymptotes. So that's the stuff we did in the last video. Step number five, we're also going to find those horizontal asymptotes. Step number six says we're going to plot out a few more points between each x-intercept and our vertical asymptotes. Step number seven, we're going to draw in that line to complete the graph. And then step number eight, you should always check your answer using your calculator to graph these out. So here's the first example we're going to run through. We've got f of x equals 3 over x minus 2. What I want to look at first is the domain of this function. Remember, the bottom of the fraction can't be 0, so I'm just going to say that x minus 2 cannot equal 0, which means that our x can't be 2. Now we're going to jump into all of those steps that we were talking about before. In order to find the y-intercepts, we said we were going to plug in 0 for our x value. In this function up here, just plug in a 0 for that x. So on bottom we get 0 minus 2, so that's negative 2. 3 divided by negative 2 is negative 3 halves. Now what I'm going to do with that right away is I'm going to go over to my graph and just plot that out. It's the point 0, negative 3 halves. So we have to go down 1 and a half spaces and put a dot right there. So there's our y-intercept. Next thing we're going to find is our x-intercept. In order to do that, we're going to take the numerator of our rational function and set it equal to 0. Now we can't really set 3 equal to 0. That doesn't make a whole lot of sense. So what that tells me is there are no x-intercepts for this graph. Next step is to find the vertical asymptotes. If you remember from the last video we watched, in order to find the vertical asymptotes, what we want to do is take the bottom and set it equal to 0, and then we're going to solve. So I'm just going to add this 2 over. So that tells me the line x equals 2 is a vertical asymptote. I'm going to draw in that vertical asymptote. Next thing we're going to find are the horizontal asymptotes of our graph. So remember, in order to find horizontal asymptotes, we need to look at the powers on top and bottom. Since there isn't an x value on the top of our fraction, it's like there's a 0 power. Well, on bottom, there's a first power to x. Thinking back to our last video, if the power on top is smaller than the power on bottom, then the line y equals 0 is automatically a horizontal asymptote. So I'm going to draw in that one right along this x value of 0. So we've got these two lines that kind of split our graph. What we need to do next is plug in a few more x values to get back some more ordered pairs that we can plot out and get a better picture of what our graph is going to look like. I'm going to start on the left hand side of this graph. So I'm going to plug in numbers that are less than 2. I'm thinking 1 and also negative 1. First, plugging in 1. Well, 1 minus 2 is negative 1 on bottom. If we take 3 divided by negative 1, we get negative 3. Plotting that one out at 1, negative 3, just drawn in that dot. If we plug in negative 1, well, on bottom we get negative 1 minus 2, which is negative 3. 3 divided by negative 3 is negative 1. So we plot that one out. And what we can see happening is our graph from this y-intercept that we drew before, it's heading through this point. But then that asymptote causes our graph to level off right there. If we head in the other direction towards our vertical asymptote, again going through that y-intercept, it's got to hit that point 1, negative 3. But then again, that asymptote causes our graph to head straight down at that value. I also want to plug in some points on the right-hand portion of our graph. So maybe we decide to plug in 3 and 5. 
If we plug 3 into our function, well, 3 minus 2 is 1 on bottom. 3 divided by 1 is 3. If we plug in 5 on bottom, 5 minus 2 is 3, and 3 divided by 3 is 1. So we've got the point 3, 3. And we've also got the point 5, 1. So what I can see is this graph comes down along this vertical asymptote, hits that point 3, 3, and then kind of curves down towards that point 5, 1. So there's kind of a general sketch of what this graph would look like. What we could do now is plug this thing into our calculator to make sure that the picture on there matches up with the picture that we just got. I've already got my function typed into the calculator. Make sure you put that denominator stuff inside of parentheses so it tells the calculator to take 3 divided by that entire x minus 2 stuff. If we graph it out, now my calculator doesn't draw in the asymptotes, but there is a vertical asymptote at 2, and there's a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. Comparing these two pictures side by side, obviously the calculator picture looks a little bit better than mine, but we get the general idea. They're basically the same shape. Taking a look at our next example, we've got the function f of x equals 3 plus 2x over 1 plus x. Just like before, we're going to start by finding the domain. So the bottom of the fraction cannot equal 0, which means that x can't be negative 1. Finding the y-intercepts, we're going to plug in a 0 for our x value. So on top, 2 times 0 is 0. 3 plus 0 is 3. On bottom, we've got a 1. 3 divided by 1 is 3. So that's the ordered pair 0, 3. And let's go ahead and plot out that ordered pair right away. So we go up three spaces, put a dot. Next thing we're going to find are the x-intercepts of our graph. In order to find the x-intercepts, take the top of the fraction and set it equal to 0 and solve. We would subtract the 3 over. So we get 2x equals negative 3. Divide by 2. We get an x value of negative 3 halves. I'm going to plot that point out. Go left one and a half spaces. Put a dot there. Next thing on the list is the vertical asymptote. So we're going to take the bottom of the fraction and set it equal to 0. Subtract the 1 over, we get x equals negative 1. I'm going to draw a vertical line through that x value of negative 1. Then we need to look at our horizontal asymptote. Highest power on top of our fraction is a 1. Highest power on bottom is also a 1. So what we need to do is set up that fraction using the leading coefficients. On top, the leading coefficient is this 2 right here. On bottom, we've got a leading coefficient of 1. Reducing that down, we've got the line y equals 2. So again, drawing that line at y equals 2. Now we've got our two asymptotes drawn in. Next step is to find a few more points to plot out. I'm going to start to the left of this x value of negative 1. So I'm thinking maybe negative 2 is a good number to plug in. If we do that, we should get back a y value of 1. So negative 2, 1, plotting that point out. I think what we can see happening is that our graph has to be pretty level along this asymptote. It's got to go through that point negative 2, 1, and then kind of point straight down around our vertical asymptote. Now we need to work our way to the right on this picture. I'm actually going to plug in negative a half. That's directly to the right of negative 1. When we do that, we should get a y value of 4. So at negative a half, we are up at 4 right here. If we plug in an x value of 4, we get a y value of 2.2. So out here at 4, we're just a little bit above 2. So our graph comes down along this vertical asymptote through that y-intercept and then levels off along this horizontal asymptote going through that other point. So there's kind of a general sketch of what our graph should look like. When we're using our calculator to check our answer, we should put both the top and the bottom inside of parentheses just to make sure our calculator is doing the order of operations the way we want it to. Graphing out this picture, 
Again, we can't see those asymptotes, but there is one at x equals negative one and at y equals two. And I think that picture looks pretty close to the one I drew out. On example three here, there is going to be a little bit of simplifying that we can do with this one, but I'm gonna find that domain before we do anything else. Remember, domain for rational functions, the bottom can't be zero. So I'm just gonna set that up. The bottom of the fraction cannot equal zero. This is a quadratic and it can actually be factored out. We could factor it into x minus three and x plus one cannot equal zero. Solving each one of those, we would see that we can't have an x value of three and we can't have an x value of negative one. Now we're gonna jump back to simplifying that function down and I'm gonna use that same factoring on bottom to help us out a little bit. We can factor that bottom quadratic into x minus three and x plus one. On top, we've got a difference of perfect squares. So we could rewrite that as x plus three and x minus three. Since we've got a factor of x minus three on top and bottom, we're allowed to cancel those things out. So our simplified version of this function is x plus three over x plus one. Now something a little bit different is gonna happen with this graph since we had a factor that we canceled out. I know we said earlier that we couldn't safely plug three into our original function. If we plug three into this new function, we will get back an answer. So plug three in, on top we get six, on bottom we get four, that reduces down to 1.5. Now, since we said that three isn't technically in the domain, when we graph this out, this actually becomes a hole in the graph. So at three, 1.5, we've got a hole in the picture right there since that three value isn't included in the domain. Anytime you cancel out a factor on top and bottom, it'll produce a hole in the graph, which we plot out using that open circle. Now, for the rest of this example, I'm gonna focus on this simplified version of our function to help us find these other things. So, for the y-intercepts, we plug in a zero for our x value. Zero plus three on top is three, zero plus one on bottom is one, three divided by one is three, which gives us the ordered pair zero, three. Plotting that thing out, we go up three spaces, put a dot, Finding the x-intercepts, we wanna take the top of the function and set it equal to zero, so we get x equals negative three. So I'm gonna put a dot at x equals negative three. Next thing on the list is the vertical asymptote. So we take the bottom of our new fraction, x plus one, set it equal to zero, so we get x equals negative one as our vertical asymptote. Drawing that thing in, it's just a straight up and down line through that x value of negative one. Next, we look at the horizontal asymptotes. So we look at the powers on top and bottom. They've both got a first powered x on there. Since the power on top is the same as the power on bottom, we need to look at the leading coefficients. So on top, we've got a one. On bottom, we've got a one. So that means the line y equals one is our horizontal asymptote. And then we want a few more points. I'm looking to the left of this negative one value, so maybe we plug in negative two. Plugging negative two into our new function, on top we get one, on bottom we get negative one, so that's a y value of negative one. So left two spaces, down one space. Our graph is going to be flat along this horizontal asymptote and then turn and point straight down along that vertical asymptote. If we look at the right hand side, we've already got two points plotted out there. So our line has to come down along this vertical asymptote, hit that y-intercept at three, turn. Now remember, there's a hole in the graph, so I don't wanna go all the way through there. I wanna stop on the left hand side and then pick back up on the right hand side of our graph. When we check our answer on our calculator, we wanna use that original function that we had, putting both the top and bottom inside of parentheses. When we graph this thing out, we can't actually see the hole at three, but if we look at the table instead, we can see that we do get a calculator error at three 
even though it doesn't necessarily show up on the graph. I've got one example for finding zeros of a rational function. Just like any other function, what we want to do is just take our function and set it equal to zero, and then we're going to start solving. I see this 2 hanging out at the front of our function. I want to subtract that over to the left-hand side. So we get negative 2 equals 5 over x squared plus 2. Now, I don't like this fraction look, so what I want to do is multiply both sides by x squared plus 2, which is going to let us cancel out that fraction. Now, on the left-hand side, when we multiply, we're going to have to do a little distributive property with this negative 2. So taking negative 2 times x squared, we get negative 2x squared. Taking negative 2 times 2, we get negative 4. On the right-hand side, we've still got this 5. Add this 4 back over to the right-hand side. We get negative 2x squared equals 9. Divide by negative 2, and we get x squared equals negative 9 halves. Now, in order to solve this, we would square root each side. But we can't square root a negative number on the right-hand side. So what that tells me is there are no zeros for this function. That's all I have for this video. Make sure you guys are filling out that Google form linked in the description down below. And thanks for watching.